Penny was alone in a hotel room. All of a sudden, somebody knocked on the door and a man came into the room. But when he saw Penny, he apologized and said he must have entered the wrong room. As soon as he went out, Penny called the police. Why? Penny thought something was wrong because the man knocked on the door before entering. If he really believed it was his room, he wouldn't have knocked. He must have done it to check if there was someone in the room. Four people are sitting at a table next to you in a cafe. There's a man, Jason, and three women, Rosie, Sarah, and Claire. Can you guess which woman is his wife? Even though Sarah's wearing an outfit that looks very much like the one Jason's wearing, she's not his wife. She doesn't have a ring. Claire has no ring either, but Rosie has a matching one. A detective got an anonymous email about an upcoming heist in one of New York's museums. In order to stop it from happening, he needs to know the month the heist is planned for. Later, the police managed to find a clue. It was a note with a secret code. The police couldn't crack it, so they brought it to the detective. What month is the heist planned for? The detective cracked the code almost immediately. A jar in the picture stands for J, a ukulele stands for U, a nugget stands for N, and an eggplant stands for E. Ah, June! There are 12 floors in the apartment building. The higher the floor, the more people live there. Which floor does the elevator go to most often? It's the first floor. The residents of all floors go down to the first floor. The other day, Annabelle was rummaging around her auntie's attic when she accidentally stumbled upon five short chains, each made of four silver links. She thought it could be great if she combined them all into one big chain of 20 links. When she went back to town, she brought those tiny chains to a jeweler. He told her it would cost $5 for each silver link that he would have to break and then reseal. How much will the chain cost? Annabelle could do that for $25 if she told the jeweler to break a link in each chain. But she was really smart, so she asked the jeweler to break all four links in one chain and use them to attach the other chains together, which cost her $20. One day, Stephanie got lost in the woods. And no wonder, in the end, she stumbled upon an old witch's house. The door cracked open and she came in. The witch turned out to be really kind and promised Stephanie to make her one dream come true if she cracks a riddle. Stephanie was dreaming of a new phone, so she agreed. The witch asked, if 11 plus 3 equals 2, what does 8 plus 6 equal? It took Stephanie quite a while to come up with an answer, but she nailed it. What was the answer? Eleven o'clock plus three equals two o'clock. Eight o'clock plus six equals two o'clock too. Hop on the bright side of life together with our brand new tees, hoodies, and more. Click the link to pick your choice. You're getting hungry and want to boil a 2-minute egg. If you only have a 3-minute hourglass timer, a 4-minute hourglass timer, and a 5-minute hourglass timer, how can you boil the egg for only 2 minutes? When you see the water boiling, turn the 3-minute timer and 5-minute timer over. When the 3-minute timer runs out, you need to put the egg in the boiling water. You'll have 2 minutes on the 5-minute hourglass timer, and when it finishes, take the egg out of the water and enjoy your meal. Mr. Wright had a small store in Chicago called Five Flags, but there were six flags hanging outside. He could easily correct that mistake, but he didn't. Can you figure out the reason? At first, it was just a mistake. But later, Mr. Wright noticed that people would often come to his store to tell about that problem, which increased his sales. A wise king realized he was tired of all the hard work he had to do, so he decided to find someone who could replace him. 
he decided to make a challenge, and the one who nails it will become the new king. Anyone who wanted to take the throne needed to put a whole cucumber into a glass bottle without cutting the cucumber or damaging the bottle. The participants had a week to do it. This challenge seemed to be impossible, so only 5 people decided to take part, and there was only one winner. How did he put the cucumber in the bottle? He placed a baby cucumber still on its stem into the bottle. Cucumbers grow rather fast, so he had enough time to win that competition. If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? Nope, in 72 hours it's going to be night again. You see a bathtub filled with water. You have a spoon, a cup, and a bucket. Which will you choose to empty the bathtub? Obviously, choose to pull out the plug. Allison majored in math at university. Her roommates wanted to test her intelligence. They took three envelopes and wrote short messages on them. Then they put the answers to Allison's exam questions in one of the envelopes. Only one envelope had a truthful message written on it. The other two were false. Allison wasn't allowed to open the envelopes and could only pick one. The first message read, There are no exam answers here. The second was, the exam answers are here. And the third message read, the exam answers aren't in the second envelope. Which envelope should Allison pick? The third one. It tells the truth, which means the exam answers are in the first envelope. Joanna and Josh were on their honeymoon in France. On the first day, they went on a city tour around Paris and left all their stuff in the hotel room. When they came back, someone was standing outside their door, trying to get in. The couple called the receptionist right away. But the man claimed Joanna and Josh owed him some money for the tours they had taken in the past four days. The receptionist knew the man was lying right away. How did he figure it out? It was the couple's first day in the hotel. Russell and Anna were on vacation. One day, Anna told Russell she couldn't go to the beach with him because she was feeling unwell. When Russell came back to the room to grab his phone, Anna was gone. He found her by the pool and asked, Are you here alone? She nodded, but Russell immediately realized she was lying. How? There were two soda pops on her table and two fruit platters. Apparently, this was also going to be Russell and Anna's last vacation together. Gregory was on a mission to take some nature photos for his blog. As he was walking through the forest, he fell into a deep pit. He tried to climb out of it, but in vain. When he held onto one rock, it gave away, and water started to pour inside. The pit was filling fast. Gregory saw a deflated ball, an empty barrel, and a piece of wooden board. What should he use to get out of the pit? Well, the deflated ball is too small and has a slit in its side. The wooden board won't support his weight. The best option is the empty barrel. It'll keep Gregory afloat. Paul and Pauline left for their honeymoon and asked their neighbor to look after their house. When they returned, the woman found out that she had lost all her expensive jewelry because of a power outage. The woman had hidden her jewelry in a supposed safe place. The house wasn't robbed. The neighbor was an honest person. The jewelry got lost by accident. What happened? The wife had hid her jewelry in the freezer in a bag with frozen food. After the power failure, all the food spoiled. The kind-hearted neighbor decided to help and threw away all the bad food, together with the jewelry. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full, but your friend argues it's less than half full. How can you figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel?
tilt the barrel so that the water touches its rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Mark, Jim, and Bob work as managers in the same office. One day, one of them is fired, and one gets a promotion. The remaining manager wants to resign at first, but then changes his mind. You know that the one who's fired is older than the rest and single. Jim's younger than the manager who has decided to stay at work, and he doesn't know Bob's wife. Who's fired? It's not Jim, because he's younger than the manager who stays. It's also not Bob, because he's married. It means that Mark has been fired, Jim has got a promotion, and Bob has decided to stay in his position. Ellis had to go to the hospital the other day. When she entered, she immediately felt something off about the place. Walking along the hall, she spotted three doctors. There was something completely wrong about one of them. Which doctor is crazy? The one on the left, he's got wolf eyes and teeth, and there's no badge on his uniform. Stay away from him, Ellis. All right, Ellis didn't listen to our piece of advice and went straight to Dr. Wolf's room. He says he needs to apply some new protective cream on her. But in fact, he just wants to test it. After covering Ellis with this magic lotion, she shouldn't have trusted him. He makes Ellis choose one of three containers to jump into. Wow, this is a weird hospital. One of them is filled with toxic waste. In the second container, there's acid that can eat through metal. The third one is filled with lava from a volcano that almost ruined a whole town a year ago. What container should Ellis choose? At least this time, Ellis made the right choice. She picked the container with lava. The volcano erupted a year ago, so the lava is already completely solid and cool. Okay, she nailed the first experiment, and Dr. Wolf gives Ellis a choice of three pills. He says the red one can help see the past, the blue one can help see the future, and the yellow one can help read other people's minds. Which one should Ellis choose? Ellis was smart enough this time. She randomly picked the yellow one, but she suspected it was another experiment. She gulped the water but never swallowed the pillow and still has it in her cheek. In fact, all three of them were poisoned. When the wolf went outside for a second, Ellis spat out the pill and ran away. Hey, try the urgent care clinic, Ellis. No wolf's there. Ginny was cooking dinner for her friends. When everyone was at the table, she suddenly realized there was something wrong with one of her friends. Which friend didn't like the meal? It's Mike. He secretly shared it with Jenny's dog. Everybody knows that an old witch lives in this spooky old house. Nobody really wants to meet her. Mary is in this house right now, but she seems to be alone. How come? Who said witches can't have a name Mary? She was once young and beautiful too, but then that darn spell happened. One town had a weird law that said all the men had to be cleanly shaven, but no man was allowed to shave himself. The only person who was licensed to shave them was a 40-year-old hairdresser. But who shaved the hairdresser? there was no need. The hairdresser was a woman. Allison met a stranger yesterday, and she immediately knew who he was. She hadn't seen this person before, and no one had ever described him to her. He wasn't a celebrity, and he wasn't doing anything unusual. So how come she knew who he was? The man was the twin brother of one of Allison's friends. Bill is a shoe shiner. He offers his services to passers-by for free. Still, people who accept it end up paying him of their own will. How so?
Bill shines only one shoe for free. People don't want to look bizarre with just one clean shoe and have to pay for the shining of the other one. The king told his three daughters to place three identical kettles with the same amount of water on the fire. The king promised that the husband of the daughter whose kettle would boil first would become his heir. His youngest daughter's kettle boiled first. How come? While the other daughters kept lifting their kettle's lids to check if the water was already boiling, the youngest one kept it closed. Up for some math? Nah, just kidding. You'll only need your logic. Find a way to get 200 out of 188 by just using one line. Use the line to cut 188 horizontally. This way, you'll get two 100s. One person was 25 years old in 2000 and 20 years old in 2005. How is this possible? This person lived before Common Era. One man went to his friend's party and told his wife he'd be back before sunrise. He shaved and left home. He returned as promised before sunrise, but he was sporting a long, thick beard. How come? The man and his wife lived in a place with polar nights that can last for several months. A man was driving his car all the way from New York to Boston. Only at the end of the trip did he discover that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he managed to reach his destination successfully, and his journey wasn't affected by this problem at all. How is it possible? The punctured tire was the spare one. The financial director of a big company finally persuaded new partners to sign a super important agreement. He then put this document into a folder and left it on the table in his office. When he arrived at work the next morning, the folder was gone. John gathered all the employees who were in the office at the time and questioned them. The cleaning lady said that she had been busy washing the floor and hadn't paid attention to anything around. The designer explained that he hadn't left his working place even once. What's more, being an artist, he didn't have any interest in agreement documents. The accountant admitted that he had entered John's office to have some documents signed. But once he noticed there was no one inside, he immediately left. Who took the folder with the agreement? It was the designer. John never mentioned which folder was gone. How would he know that the missing folder had an agreement inside? Eric wears either only black or only white socks. One morning, he was in a hurry, getting ready for an important meeting with new partners. Suddenly, the power goes out. The guy has 10 white and 10 black socks in his drawer, but all of them are mixed. He doesn't want to look silly at work wearing different socks. If it's completely dark in the room and Eric can't see anything, how many socks should he pull out of the drawer to get himself two matching ones? Three socks are more than enough. In a set of three socks, he's bound to have two of the same color. A hungry vampire is following you in a lonely street one dark night. Suddenly, you see a house with its door wide open and decide to hide there. The vampire can't enter your shelter since you locked the door in the nick of time, but it's waiting for you outside. However, you still have some hope. There are three doors leading out of the house. When you open the first door, there's molten lava. No thanks. The second door leads to the room with tarantulas as large as your head. Yikes! As for the third door, you can definitely hear a huge dog barking inside that room, and you're kind of afraid of it. What should you do? Ah, just wait till morning. Vampires can't stand daylight, and your pursuer will have to leave you alone. 
you're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water coming from a faucet on the wall. There are no windows in the room, and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. Jane told her boss someone had taken the document she prepared for the meeting. She added that she had noticed someone come in wearing a smart suit, gloves, and a black mask, safety first. This person also had three rings on their fingers. The boss didn't believe her. Why? She said the person was wearing gloves. Then how did she see three rings on their fingers? Jane must have simply forgotten to print those documents out. A hotel owner was visiting the construction site to see the progress. He wanted to start welcoming the guests as soon as possible and had big plans. At some point, he left his briefcase with important documents on the table. Some worker grabbed it and ran away. The hotel owner didn't see who it was, but he immediately called the police. There were three suspects. The architect said he had been talking on the phone, trying to get electricity for the site, as there was not. The designer told the police he had been trying to find the best paint for the walls. The electrician explained he had been down in the basement trying to fix a burst light bulb. The detectives figure out who was lying. Can you? It was the electrician. How could he fix the burst light bulb if there was no electricity at the construction site at all? Ah, liar, liar, pants on fire. Two teen sisters, Maya and Ariana, were supposed to study in the library, but one of them went to a party instead. When they came back home, their parents could immediately tell who hadn't been to the library. Can you? It was Maya. Look, there's glitter in her hair. Mr. Harris is a landlord. In his building, it's prohibited to have any pets. But he keeps hearing some barking on the third floor. There are three apartments there. So he decides to pay a visit to everyone who lives on that floor. Mr. Walker, Ms. Clark, and Mr. Allen. Can you tell who keeps a dog? It's Mr. Allen. Take a look at the shoe rack. Some of his shoes are chewed. Four friends were going to another city by car. But at some point, something distracted the driver, and they got in a car crash. A police officer arrived and started the investigation. He asked who had been driving, but no one took the blame. Then, the officer inspected the car. Can you tell who the driver was? The driver was the red-haired girl. There's a sweater on the driver's seat. She's the only one not wearing a jacket or sweater, so it must be hers. Mrs. Miller was waiting for a delivery, but she never got it. And since the woman had to go to work, she asked her husband to drive to the post office and ask about her package. When Mrs. Miller came back home, Mr. Miller said he'd just returned from the post office, but they said the package hadn't arrived yet. Mrs. Miller didn't believe him and claimed he hadn't driven anywhere. How did she understand it? Take a look at the car. It's all covered in snow. To go to the post office, Mr. Miller would have to clean it first. In a parallel universe, you're only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Rellum came back home after a long and entertaining day at the club. Her three daughters were supposed to have a lot of fun on their own. She asked them what they had been doing. Hannah said she'd been watching TV all day long. Ellie answered she'd spent the day at a water park. Ava told her mom she and her friends had a candy-eating contest. Still, Mrs. Rellum could tell one of her daughters was lying. That daughter spent all day studying. Who was it? It was Hannah. Take a closer look at her hands. There are some ink stains. 
If she had actually watched TV, she wouldn't have needed a pen. In June, students of the Faculty of Economics had their econometrics exam. It was the hardest one in that semester, and everyone was worried. On the day of the exam, the students entered the classroom. Everyone was assigned to a specific seat. A professor was sure one of the students was going to cheat, so he made that person sit right in front of him. Which student was it, and how did the professor know? It's the guy with dark hair. It's June, and all the students are lightly dressed. Still, this student is wearing a sweater with long sleeves. He must be up to something. Now, take a look at these three students, Savannah, Melody, and Scarlett. One of them managed to cheat at the exam, and no one noticed it. Can you tell who it was and how she managed to use her notes? It was Scarlett. She's wearing long boots. That's where she kept her notes. Michelle was having a house party. She noticed that her brother had disappeared and went upstairs to find him. When she neared his room, she heard laughter. Her brother was in there with some girl. But Michelle couldn't figure out who it was. She got very curious. So after they left, she sneaked into his room to look for some hints. She suspected three girls, Lily, Sydney, and Nicole. Michelle immediately guessed who her brother was dating. Who was it? Her brother is dating Nicole. There's an earring on the couch. And Nicole is wearing only one earring, which looks exactly the same. She must have lost it. Can you tell which student in the classroom isn't a real person? The guy in the middle doesn't cast a shadow. There's definitely something fishy about him. Michael had a crush on Ellie, the girl he studied with. One day, he decided to write her a note, asking her out. Unfortunately, he didn't remember which desk was Ellie's. Can you tell which one Michael needs? Take a look at Ellie's photo. She's waving her left hand, which means she's likely left-handed. There's only one desk where the pen is to the left of the copybook. It must be Ellie's desk. A grocery store manager found out that someone had been stealing bananas from the store all the time. The man conducted his own investigation and got three suspects. But he couldn't accuse the customers until he was 100% sure. Take a look at these people and say who the banana thief is. Look at the guy wearing a top hat. It's a perfect place for hiding and stealing stuff. He must be the thief. Brandon and Genevieve are on their working trip to London. They decided to meet in a cafe in the evening. Now, they're both driving there. Can you tell which of them isn't smart? Brandon. In England, people drive on the left side of the road and he's driving on the right. Early in the morning, a big sum of money went missing from the accountant's safe in the office. Only three people were at work at that time. Haley, the accountant, said she'd left for a couple of minutes to go to the bathroom. Eric, the software manager, claimed he'd had his lunch break and hadn't seen anything. Joseph, the cleaning man, said he'd been cleaning the second floor at the time. Can you figure out who's lying? It's Eric. He couldn't have a lunch break. It was still early in the morning. Someone had been stealing food from a grocery store. The manager couldn't find out who it was and hired a detective. Look at the security camera footage for the last year and say who the thief is. It's the dark-haired pregnant lady. It's been a year and she's still pregnant. Plus, the size of her belly has never changed. It must be fake. 
Theo was spending the day with her boyfriend Derek. After lunch, he said he had some urgent business to deal with and left her for a couple of hours. When Derek came back, Theo realized he'd been cheating on her and broke up with him. How did she find out? Take a closer look at Derek's neck. There's a lipstick stain. It's red, while Theo is wearing pink lipstick, which means it's not hers. Mr. Roberts, one of the best surgeons in the country, came to his insurance company. The man said he'd been robbed right in the street. The assistant asked if Mr. Roberts remembered any specific details about the criminal. He said he didn't. Everything happened too fast, and he had very bad eyesight. The assistant refused to start the investigation. He said Mr. Roberts was lying. He wasn't actually robbed. Why didn't the man believe Mr. Roberts? Mr. Roberts is a surgeon. But it's not possible to work as one if you have poor eyesight. It means Mr. Roberts lied. In a small town, someone stole all the chicken nuggets from a local store. The owner called the police, and they started the investigation. There were three suspects who were in the store at around that time. Mrs. Wilson said her family was vegetarian. She wouldn't be interested in chicken nuggets. Mr. Martin said he needed to return home very fast. He had to take a conference call. He didn't have any time to waste. Mr. Thomas simply stated that he hadn't stolen anything. Can you tell who the thief is? The thief is Mrs. Wilson. She said her family was vegetarian, but behind her back, there's a freshly cooked chicken on the table. Esme was having a walk in the forest. After it started to get dark, the girl tried to find her way back home, but got lost. Finally, she came across a witch's house and asked the woman to help her find her way home. The witch only agreed to do so on one condition. She gave Esme a piece of string and said, Put it anywhere. If I can step over it, I'll keep you with me forever. If I don't manage to do it, I'll show you the way home. What can Esme do? Esme should put the string right next to the wall. This way, the witch won't be able to step over it. Take a close look at the picture and figure out who the thief is. Look at this guy. His right hand is inside the woman's bag. A woman went out of the airport. She hailed a taxi and gave the directions to the driver. As soon as they drove off, the woman started to talk. Her blabbering annoyed the driver. He turned to her and said, I can't hear what you're saying. I'm almost deaf. The woman was shocked and didn't open her mouth for the rest of the ride. Only after she got out of the taxi did she realize the man had lied to her. How did the woman understand it? If the driver had hearing problems, he wouldn't have been able to follow her directions. Detective James was invited to Long Hill College, where more and more students had their things stolen. The detective was asked to investigate these cases. In a week's time, the man had three suspects. What were you doing when the last theft happened? He asked them. Thomas said, that day I was away. I had to take my younger sister to her rehearsals. Amanda replied, I spent that day in the library getting ready for my presentation. And Ryan said, This summer, I'm going to Denmark with my parents. That's why I spend all my free time learning Dutch. Detective James immediately understood who was lying. Can you figure it out? It was Ryan. They speak Danish in Denmark. Dutch is the language of the Netherlands. Jason works in the same company as Amy, a bright and lovely girl. The guy has had a crush on Amy since they first met. To attract the girl's attention, Jason agrees to take part in the brain challenge game organized by their company. The first task is to crack a rebus puzzle. Jason is given a piece of paper. That's what he sees there. It doesn't take the guy long to figure out the answer. 
What is it? It's broken promises. Jason is one of the few who gave the correct answer. He moves to the next level. He finds himself in a room full of random stuff. There, he needs to find an object that would be the answer to the following question. What goes up when the rain goes down? Look around and help Jason find the needed object. The guy chose a red and white umbrella. And that was the right answer. His next challenge was to get out of a basement. There are no windows there. Jason sees just one door with a letter combination lock. The only thing that can probably give him some hint is a note he finds in the farthest corner. P plus 3, N minus 1, B minus 1, N plus 4, S plus 1. What's the code word? Jason needed more time to crack this riddle, but he managed to get out of the basement. The code word was SMART. The key to this riddle was hidden in the alphabet. P plus three following letters is S, N minus one letter is M, and so on. Jason is amazed to find out he's one of the two contestants to make it to the finals. Now, he has to do his best to win. The guy comes up to the table with three cups on it, but only one of these drinks is safe to try. The other two are poisoned. And even though a mistake won't cost Jason his life, the consequences will be unpleasant. The drinks are tea with sugar, cappuccino, and hot chocolate. Which one should Jason choose? If it was indeed sugar in the tea, it would have melted completely. But it didn't happen. Cappuccino looks suspiciously green. It's probably unsafe to drink. Jason opted for the hot chocolate and won the challenge. Now, Amy will definitely notice him. Three people are hiding in bathroom stalls. Try to figure out who is a pregnant woman. It's the one wearing the untied sneakers. It's often difficult for pregnant women to bend over to lace up their footwear. Two people were born at the same moment but they don't celebrate their birthdays on the same day. How is it possible? They were born in different time zones. In one of these zones, it was already the next day. Detective Brown was having dinner in his kitchen. Suddenly, he heard screams coming from his neighbor's house. He rushed there. The door was open. When he ran inside, he saw a paramedic bending over a lying man. Once the doctor saw the detective, he exclaimed, He fell down the stairs. Luckily, he's just unconscious. I need to take him to the hospital. Detective Brown didn't need to think twice. He called the ambulance and arrested the man on the spot. Why? When the detective was running towards the neighbor's house, he didn't see any car outside. Then how did the paramedic get there? And how did he know his help was needed? You don't have them when you're born, but you get them later. In several years, you don't have them anymore. But then they come again, but in a different form. Many years later, they might leave you again. What are they? They are your teeth. A criminal appeared in a small town, and two young women went missing. Right now, the third girl is being taken away. When she comes to her senses, she finds herself in a well with two other girls. The well isn't particularly deep, so they decide to try to get out of it. The shortest and slimmest of them climbs on top of the other two, but she can't reach the edge of the well. What can the girls do to get out of there? The tallest of the girls should climb on top. She has the longer arms and will easily reach the edge of the well. You get lost in the woods in the middle of the winter. Suddenly, you see a cabin. It's dark and cold inside.
there is just one candle on the table and a wood-burning stove in the corner. You pull out your matchbox and see there's only one match left. What should you light first? The match, of course. It was winter when an elderly couple finished building a pretty new house. The husband was responsible for the construction, while his wife was a self-appointed decorator. The house looked beautiful. Very proud, they invited their teenage grandchildren to have a look at their work. But within an hour, one guy and two girls managed to break several windows. They also knocked down the fence, removed the decorations, and ruined the roof. But the most bizarre thing, the retired couple didn't seem to mind. They just smiled looking at the teenagers. Can you figure out what was going on? The grandparents made a gingerbread house and invited their grandchildren to eat it. Five costs $25 and 25, $50. If you buy 255, you'll pay $75. What is it that you buy and how much does one item cost? You're buying door numbers, and one of them costs $25. On a rainy Monday morning, a car hit a woman at the crosswalk and sped away without stopping. Luckily, the woman wasn't badly hurt. She even managed to describe the vehicle before being taken to a hospital. It was a green van. The accident happened in a small town. That's why the police figured out easily that there were just three cars like that. They found and questioned all the car owners. Gary said, My sister took part in a concert in another town. I gave her a lift and waited for the show to finish to drive her back. Angela explained to the police she'd been busy with some household chores, gardening, washing her van, and the like. Larry answered he was ill. That's why he spent the whole day in bed drinking hot tea. The police officers understood who was lying right away. Who was it? It was a rainy day. Washing a car and gardening when it's raining? Not the best idea. Angela must be lying. A man was in an eight-story building when a fire started. He jumped out the window but didn't even bruise himself. How is it possible? The man jumped out of the first floor window. Two people are standing near the river. Both of them want to get to the opposite side, but the boat can carry only one of them. It's summer, and the river isn't frozen. And still, they manage to get to the other bank. How? They are on opposite sides of the river. One town had a weird law. All the men leaving there had to be clean-shaven, but no man was allowed to shave himself. The only person in the town who was licensed to shave them was a 40-year-old barber. But then, who shaved the barber? There was no need. The barber was a woman. A mother promised her son to pay him $60 per hour if he washed his hands for six seconds before eating a meal. The son did that, and his mom gave him his well-earned money. But the boy got upset. Why? Because he received just 10 cents. Uh-oh, Brandon has missed too many lectures, and now the guy has problems with his professor. The man agrees to give the student a chance to redeem himself, but only if he fulfills a task the professor has for him. I'll give you one glass of milk and one glass of water. You'll need to pour the two liquids into a bowl. But you should be able to separate the milk from the water later. You can't use any kind of dividers. Brandon spent several hours mulling over the problem. But he was desperate enough to crack this riddle. What did he do? He poured all the water into a bowl and froze it. After that, he added the milk. 
One morning, Melissa saw that some money was missing from the wallet she had left on the table the night before. Her husband was on a business trip, so it must have been one of her sons who took the cash. Jason, who was 17, 15 year old Jacob, or her youngest son, Andrew, he was 13. Melissa asked her sons what they had been doing the previous evening. Jason said, I felt unwell and had a headache. After dinner, I took a painkiller and went to bed right away. Jacob told his mom, My friend Eric stayed for dinner. After that, I gave him a lift home. And Andrew reminded Melissa he had had his basketball training. The woman immediately understood who had taken the money. Can you figure it out as well? Jacob was lying. He was only 15 years old and couldn't drive, legally. Detective Green was called to investigate an accident. A car crashed into a store window and smashed the glass. There are two suspects. Both of them deny causing the accident. Detective Green doesn't need much time to figure out who the culprit is. Do you know it too? It's the owner of the blue car. The pattern on its tires is the same as the one on the ground in front of the store. It was a busy Monday morning at the police station when a man rushed in. I was robbed on the way to the bank, he screamed. I was going there carrying a bag with a large sum of money. Suddenly a man wearing a black mask and a pair of gloves ran up to me. He snatched the bag and darted away. The police officer listened to the man and asked him about a fresh cut on his right cheek. The man replied it was left by a ring the criminal had been wearing. When the policeman heard these words, he immediately understood the man was lying. How did he realize that? The man said the robber had been wearing gloves. Then how could the ring scratch his cheek? You lose your friends in a crowd. You spend half an hour looking for them. And finally, here they are. What is the first thing you do as soon as you see them? You stop searching. Look at these two women and the teenager sitting on the floor. He seems to be absorbed in his smartphone. Can you figure out which woman is his mother? It's the woman on the left. Children often subconsciously sit facing their parents. The teenager and the woman also have the same hair color. Timothy and Laura were high school sweethearts. They got married shortly after college. So far, they've been together for 20 years and have two kids who don't live with them anymore. Unfortunately, the spouses have started to fight a lot recently. One day, they talk and decide to divorce. Both of them confess they've already found new partners on a dating site. Timothy says he's happy to have lots of common interests with his internet girlfriend. And Laura boasts that her new boyfriend understands her perfectly. One day, Timothy and Laura decide to meet their ideal partners in real life. Strangely, after this meeting, the couple calls off their divorce. Can you figure out why? Timothy and Laura found out they were having an online relationship with each other. An old man decided to leave all the money he's been saving for his entire life to one of his three sons. But he couldn't choose which one should get the money. That's why the man gave each of them one coin. He asked his sons to buy something that would fill the largest room in their house. The oldest son bought some raw cotton, but it wasn't enough to fill the whole room. The middle son brought home some straw, and still there was some space left in the room. And the youngest son bought two cheap things that managed to fill the room right away. He ended up being the one to get his father's money. What did he bring home?
the youngest son bought a box of matches and a candle. After he lit the candle, the room was instantly filled with light. Patrick shaves every day. But every morning, he finds his beard to be just as long as it was the day before. How come? Patrick is a barber. He shaves other people. Amanda was 21 on her last birthday. But she's going to be 23 on her next one. How is it possible? It's Amanda's 22nd birthday today. Helen was walking in the forest and got lost. After wandering hours to find her way back, she comes to a clearing. There, the woman sees three narrow paths. But one of them is blocked by huge, dense bushes with sharp thorns. The second is littered with trash and broken glass. And the third path is guarded by massive, scary-looking mantises. Uh Which road should Helen pick? The woman should choose the third path. Mantises might look terrifying, but they're totally harmless. A mad scientist caught Kevin and locked him in a small room. There were no windows, and the door was locked. But there was a note on the table. It was from the scientist. J-F-M-A-M-J-A-S-O-N-D. Guess the missing letter, and I'll set you free. In 10 minutes, Kevin was already running away from the strange place. He managed to figure out that the missing letter was J. Those were the first letters of the months of the year, from January to December. And the sixth letter, J, stood for June. Can you figure out what this rebus puzzle means? It's no biggie. No big E? Yeah. It's a fruit, it's tasty and sweet, and can give you a lot of energy. But you can also find it in your calendar. What is it? It's a date. Anna asked her colleague Daniel to give her a lift to the college where her daughter studied. She promised the girl to take her shopping that day. On their way there, Anna got an idea. How about a bet? I'll prepare one of your reports for you if you manage to figure out which girl is my daughter. Daniel was up for the challenge. When they arrived at the college, they saw three girls waiting at the gates. Daniel was confused. They all look similar. Can you figure out who Anna's daughter is? It's the girl on the left. Anna has the letter L tattooed on her wrist, and the girl is wearing a bracelet with the same letter. A teenager is walking along the street together with a car mechanic. The guy is the mechanic's son, but the mechanic isn't the boy's father. How is it possible? The car mechanic is the guy's mother. Two cars, silver and white, are moving along the same highway. The silver car is traveling at a speed that's twice higher than that of the white car. They both started at the same time. And still, after some time on the road, the two cars come across each other. How is it possible? The cars were moving toward each other. John and Michael are car mechanics. After finishing a tricky repair, they get out from under the car. John's face is all dirty, but Michael's face is miraculously clean. And still, it's Michael who goes and washes his face. Why?
Michael looked at his colleague and thought his face was dirty too. Uh But when John saw Michael, whose face was spotless, he concluded he was just as clean. When do you keep moving when you see red, but stop once it's green? It always happens when you're eating a watermelon. Who is the only brother-in-law of your mother's brother? That's your father. One night, a group of thieves was stealing boxes with electronics from a warehouse. They were carrying them to their van when they heard a police car siren. But even though the thieves didn't manage to avoid the police, they didn't get arrested. Why? They started to carry the boxes back to the warehouse, and the police thought it was a late-night delivery. Ooh, that's kind of smart. Phantoms! And other fantastic creatures! Eh, you're not impressed. All your life you've been running a myth-busting blog. It's gotten pretty popular recently. Abandoned hospitals, creepy hotel rooms, haunted apartments, cursed houses. You spend a night in all of them and take a bunch of videos to prove that all those scary stories are nothing more than fairy tales. One day, one of your fans sends you a tip about a sinister dark castle located on a rocky cliff near the coast of a raging ocean. She says this place is the scariest in the world, but you're not intimidated easily. You grab your phone and head on over. Get ready to test your courage and resourcefulness. Count how many answers you get right and find out what your score means at the end of the video. Since it's your first night, you decide to spend it in a small village. It's right by the scary castle. Usually, people can't wait to tell you how freaky this or that place is. But in this village, everyone keeps silent. You ask one of the residents to tell you something about the castle, but she responds with nothing. Did she not want to speak to you? No, that's not it. She's afraid of answering. How do you know that? I'll give you six seconds to figure it out. Look at her hand. It says, run away, on her forearm. To reach the castle, you first need to walk through a small forest. At the edge of it, you see three roads and three signs. The first sign shows a wolf, the second, a bear, and the third, a vampire. Which road should you choose? Uh You have five seconds. Quick, make a decision. You don't believe in vampires, remember? But bears and wolves, eh, those are real. Besides, it's morning, and if vampires were real, they'd be steering clear of the sunlight. You make your way through the dense thickets of the forest and record what's happening on your phone. You notice a hut. Yeah, I bet a vampire lives here, you laugh to yourself. Ha ha! Still, you decide to check it out. Your readers love that kind of stuff. You go into the dark hut and turn on the light on your phone cobwebs cover everything. The curtains are drawn. Some candles are out on the table. Ooh, a key. You grab it and put it inside your pocket. Before leaving, you notice a large wooden box in the corner and hear snoring coming from inside. You're scared out of your mind right now. And just then, the snoring stops. A vampire climbs out of the box. Oh, this is bad. Maybe you can get away before it realizes what's going on. You try to get outside, but the door's locked. Oh, the key. Yes. No, it doesn't work. What should you do? Quick, you don't have much time. Ah, just open the curtains. If it really is a vampire, it should be afraid of the sunlight. It worked! The vampire jumps back into the box to escape the light, and you make a break for it through the window. Finally, you reach the edge of the forest and get your first glimpse of the castle. In front of you is a large gate. You push on it. It swings open. As soon as you're in the courtyard, you realize you are not alone. Five other people are there. They're just standing around. No one's talking to each other. You want to know if they've heard anything about the owner of that creepy hut in the woods. So you walk a little closer, but you get a strange feeling deep in your stomach. Something's wrong with these people. 
You can't believe your eyes, but it looks like some of them are actual zombies. How many zombies are there? You have 10 seconds. Look closely. There are two of them. That guy over there doesn't have an ordinary arm. It's all bones, like a skeleton. And that woman in sunglasses, she's holding someone's eyes in her hand. Are those her eyes? You approach a guy who seems almost normal, but he doesn't look at you. He just keeps staring at the sky. Uh, it's a little scary. Okay, time to venture into the castle. As soon as you open the door, you hear music. It's a waltz, and it's coming from the main hall. Several couples are dancing around in 18th century costumes. Yikes. You decide to try and blend in by hitting the dance floor yourself. Dick -a -dick -a -dick -a -dick -a -dick -a well, after a few seconds, you look around, and your face turns pale. These people are phantoms. How did you figure it out? Look carefully at the details. You have five seconds. Look down. None of the dancers are touching the floor. They're just floating along. You run out of the hall, climb the wide stairs, and run into a random room. You lock the door and breathe heavily. <sighs> oh, you're starting to have serious doubts about all this mystical stuff. Maybe it does exist. But how is that even possible? A ray of sunlight suddenly shines on a luxurious bed with beautiful linen. Then it hits you. You're tired. Oh, you'll just lie down on the edge of the bed, and a 10-minute nap will really help get your head on straight. As soon as you close your eyes, though, you hear a rustling in the sheets right next to you. Then you feel a cold hand on your neck. You keep your eyes sealed shut. You're way too afraid to open them. But you pinch yourself to make sure you're not dreaming. The fingers on your neck start squeezing ever so slightly. Oh, that's it. You bolt out of bed. As fast as you can, you whip out your phone and try to record the uh, whatever it was. But there's nothing. Only an empty bed. Were you sleeping or was it real? You notice something. Oh, it's just a bad dream after all. What did you notice? I'll give you six seconds. The sun was shining when you laid down. Now, it's the full moon that's shining. You were out cold for a while. You leave the bedroom and walk down a long hallway lit by torches and candles. The silence is broken only by the churning of your stomach. Eh, guess you're hungry. Well, there's a heavy wooden door in front of you, and it's open just a crack. The pleasant smell of food starts wafting its way into the hallway. You go in and find a huge table, decked out with real silverware and porcelain. Oh, the food looks delicious. There's caviar, lobster, fruits, vegetables, different meats, plenty of desserts. Several people are sitting around the table, and as you approach them, they turn around to look at you. They're all uh -oh. vampires! How did you know? I'll give you five seconds to figure it out. The food on the table is untouched. The vampires have been waiting for their most important dish. You! You run. You make it back out into the hallway, then dart down a dark corridor. The vampires are chasing you. They're screaming! You find three doors at the end of the corridor. The first one has a fire symbol on it. The second has a snake symbol. And the third just says, exit. You try to open it, but it's locked. The vampires are closing in. What are you going to do? You have four seconds before you become vampire food. Try the key you found in the vampire's hut. Great! It fits! You run out into the courtyard and lock the door behind you. The moon is hidden behind some thick white clouds. You sneak through the courtyard and open the back gate of the castle. Next to the gate is a sign with an image of a werewolf on it. You walk off as quietly as possible. After about five minutes, you see a long bridge. There's a beautiful woman standing at the other end. She waves to you and motions for you to come closer. But something's bothering you. Could she be a werewolf? So, you can either cross the bridge or head back to the castle. What can you do to find out if she really is a werewolf? You have 10 seconds for this one. Good luck.
wait until the moon appears from behind the clouds. Your intuition was right. As soon as the moonlight falls on the woman, she begins to turn into a werewolf. Uh -oh. eh, still kind of cute, though. You run back into the castle grounds and close the gate behind you. Okay, reality check. You're in the courtyard. Vampires are inside the castle, a werewolf is waiting outside, and zombies are approaching. You're trapped. Why did you even come to such a scary castle? You pull out your phone and start recording a farewell video. You thank your followers for their views and comments. Thanks for subscribing. You admit that mystical creatures do exist and promise that you'll never set foot in a place like this ever again if you survive. The zombies are closing in and the werewolf is breaking down the gate. Oh, awesome. Your fear is gone and you realize that this whole thing is staged. It's all a show. How'd you figure it out? Watch the farewell video again and find the proof that everything is fake. I'll give you 10 seconds to spot the clues. Do you see that big guy with a camera behind you in the tower window? The zombies stop growling. They scream, surprise! They're not zombies. They're just wearing a whole ton of makeup. The gate opens and the woman takes off her werewolf costume and smiles. The vampires come out of the castle, carrying their fake fangs. This whole thing was set up by your fans. They wanted to scare you, and it worked. You're angry at them, but so happy that you're still alive. Okay, let's see how many you got right. One to three points. Eh, it'll be difficult for you to act in stressful situations. Watch more riddles and train yourself to be calm and focused. Four to six points. Something really bad has to happen for you to lose control. Phantoms don't seem to scare you at all that much. 7 to 10 points. You don't even know what fear is, but you do know how to come out victorious in any situation. You have one question for your fans. How did they create that floating effect for those dancers? That was awesome. Your fans look at each other. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? There were no dancers. A slight chill runs down your back. Yep. The police found out that several criminals were going to leave the country by plane. Unfortunately, no one knew what they looked like or how big the group was. Four suspicious men were detained, and their baggage was examined. Can you figure out who is innocent? Why would a bald man need a shampoo? a supposedly blind person with a flashlight, toothpaste without a toothbrush. It seems only the man on the left isn't a criminal. Anne invited her friends to spend a week in her house. The young people were having tons of fun. The day before they had to leave, a terrible storm started. It was pouring with rain. Strong winds were breaking trees, tearing down power lines, and causing power outages all over the place. The next morning, the weather was better, but Anne discovered that her favorite ring, with a diamond her granny had left her many years ago, was missing. She asked all her friends to come to the living room. I can't find one thing that's very important to me. Can you tell me what you were doing yesterday? Megan answered she spent most of the whole day in her room, reading. Walter said, I was practicing my electric guitar in the garage. Marie told Anne she didn't even know what the ring looked like. Anne knew right away who the thief was. Can you figure it out too? There was a power outage. It means Walter couldn't be playing an electric guitar. And Anne said nothing about the important thing being a ring. So how did Marie know it? Walter and Marie stole the ring together. A jewelry store manager called the police. Help! he shouted. My store has been robbed! When the officers arrived at the place, they couldn't see the man. Suddenly, they heard someone banging on the door. They didn't notice this door at first because it was hidden in the corner. When they unlocked it, they saw a man. It was the manager. Someone locked me in here. It must be one of the shop assistants. The police officers asked the man to call his employees. They were going to question them. Just a second, I can't find my phone. Ah, here it is! 
The manager didn't even start to dial the number before the officers arrested him. Why? If he was locked in the room and the phone was lying on the counter, how could he call the police? Police detective Thomas Davis was walking along the street on a winter evening. Suddenly, he saw a person in a black mask sneaking out of a house through the window. They were carrying two large bags. The detective realized it was a burglar. He ran after the stranger, but they turned the corner and disappeared. Thomas understood the criminal had hidden in one of these houses. But which one? It can't be the house on the left. There are too many people inside. There are no footprints in the snow leading to the house on the right. It means no one has been there for quite some time. Which leaves us with the house in the middle. Nathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet. But his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware the guy would return at midnight. They decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. No chores for them for one week. Not to fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make pizza. And Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started to meditate. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. A family with two teenage children went on vacation to the seaside. They lived in a small bungalow almost right on the beach. Everything was great, at first. But two days after their arrival, the younger son went missing. The police had four suspects. They invited the guy's family to look at them. Maybe they could recognize someone. The teenager's mother didn't need more than a glance before she knew who was behind her son's disappearance. Who was it? It's the man wearing the missing guy's baseball cap. Carl, an heir to a giant fortune, was found unconscious during a wild party. His sister, Sarah, stumbled across him in the bathroom. The guy was lying on the floor, barely alive. Sarah immediately called the ambulance and police. Carl was taken to a hospital. Doctors saved his life, but the guy was still unconscious. He couldn't talk. When the police questioned Sarah, she told them that her brother had felt unwell. He went to the bathroom to freshen up. After some time, she heard some noise and went to check on him. Carl must have slipped and hit his head on the sink. After the police officers heard this story, the sister got arrested right away. Why? For one thing, it happened during a loud party. How could the girl hear any suspicious noise? Carl was also lying too far away from the sink, which was on the other side of the bathroom boy with a sister like that. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there were no flashlights in the Stone Age. All the people working in the office, Janice, Brian, Teresa, Sean, and Roy, used the fridge in the kitchen to store their lunch. On Friday, Janice opened the fridge to get her bacon and cheese sandwich she brought from home. But it wasn't there. Someone had eaten her lunch. Who was it? Well, it couldn't be Brian. There's a wet umbrella near his desk. He has just come in. Teresa is a vegan. She eats neither cheese nor bacon. Roy is on a diet, and such a sandwich is by no means light food. 
This means Sean was the one who stole Janice's sandwich. You bad boy. When Joe came to work, he saw his safe was open. All the money and important documents were gone. He immediately called his friend, Detective Callum. When the man arrived, Joe told him, I think it was one of my employees. They must have borrowed my key and opened the safe. Callum questioned the three people who worked for Joe. Wayne said, I don't even know what the safe looks like. And of course, I don't know which key opens it. Austin said, I'm Joe's assistant. I do have the second key to the safe, but I was on holiday and just returned. And Julia just said, I can't prove it, but I didn't do it. Who's lying? Wayne. No one told him the safe could be opened with a key, not a combination lock. Then how did he know? Someone stole several expensive t-shirts in a designer clothing store. The manager told the security guard he had half an hour to find the thief. If you don't make it in time, you'll be fired! The guard rushed to watch the CCTV footage. Luckily, he managed to figure out who the thief was before his time ran out. And do you know who it was? It's the man in the dark blue sweater. His belly miraculously became larger after he spent some time in the store. He must be hiding the t-shirts under his sweater. Look at this picture and try to understand what's wrong here. The reflection in the mirror is all wrong. Terry was sailing around the world when his yacht got caught in a terrible storm. At one moment, the guy hit his head against the mast and lost consciousness. When he came around, he was on a beach. Unfriendly-looking locals had gathered around. Soon, Terry figured out they really didn't like strangers. They offered the guy three options. To send him to a cave filled with tarantulas, throw him into a pit swarming with yellow scorpions, or make him meet hungry lions. What should Terry choose to survive? He should opt for tarantulas. These creatures look terrifying, but they are mostly harmless to humans. Mostly. Captain Jack was a feared pirate who had robbed thousands of ships. He did it with the help of just one small trick. It allowed him to approach any ship from any country close enough to board it. What was this trick? Captain Jack had a collection of flags from different countries. Instead of using Jolly Roger, the fearsome black flag, he raised the flag of the country the ship was from. It got him immediate access. In what situation do you have more chances to survive? If you're falling from a 10-story building, or if you come across several scary snakes that look unfriendly? The snakes might not be venomous, then they won't cause you any harm. But if you're falling from a big height, well, only a miracle can… Nah, nothing's gonna save you. Bye-bye! You suddenly wake up trapped in a dark room. Your only source of light is a candle. There are two doors in front of you. Behind one of them, there's a tunnel that will lead you outside to freedom. Behind the other, just a cold brick wall. You have a key that will open only one of the doors, and you can try it just once. So how do you know which door to try? Hold the candle up to each keyhole. The flame will move near the door that leads outside. You escape to freedom, but you need to send some important documents to your friend Beth. You can't mail them in a regular package 
because the precious papers will get stolen. So you put them in a box and lock it. But Beth doesn't have the key to this lock. How can you send the papers if you can't send the key to the lock separately? First, send the lock box to Beth. She'll attach her own lock and send the box back to you. Then remove your own lock and send the package again. Beth can then remove her lock and finally open the package. Bad news! You get a call one morning from Beth. She says the crucial documents were stolen from her office. They'd been on the desk the evening before, but are nowhere to be found this morning. You immediately go there to question the employees. In no time, you gather three suspects. Sean said he had been at the movies last night. Michael had taken his girlfriend to an amusement park. And Christina was at a prestigious art gallery. Who's lying? Sean. His movie ticket isn't torn. Having been caught red-handed, Sean makes a break for it. He hops in his car and drives away. Law enforcement are on the lookout. Sean sees a police car right ahead of him and starts driving toward it. Why would he do that? He was on a bridge. He needed to go toward the patrol car to get to the other side and make his escape. No such luck for poor Sean. He gets caught and locked up. But he starts hearing rumors of an inmate planning to break out. The guards have two suspects. First, a quiet bookworm who spends most of his days with his nose buried in sci-fi novels. The second, a big, burly, tattooed guy who's always working out. Who should Sean become friends with if he wants to get out of here? The bookworm. Look closer, and you'll see his bookmark is actually a file. On Friday afternoon, the owner of that same prestigious art gallery discovered that four of the most famous artist's self-portraits had been stolen during an exhibition. The police show up to do an investigation, and now they have three suspects. Sarah, the artist, said she disappeared into one of the studios to paint. John, the security guard, explained he was just waiting outside and had no idea the portraits were gone. Daniel, the caterer, stated he was at a nearby store picking up extra napkins when the robbery took place. So, who's the thief? It's the security guard. He couldn't have known the stolen paintings were portraits if he was standing outside. As fate would have it, there was another incident that night. Michael, who never really liked what passed for art in modern times, rushed into the gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the gallery's owner thanked him for his actions. How come? Michael is a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more works. They awarded Michael a big check in gratitude. He heads home just in time to get his five kids all packed up for a camping trip that weekend. Mike and his wife are really looking forward to having the weekend for themselves to relax. But when they woke up on Saturday, they discovered the check was missing from their safe. Once the officers showed up, they interviewed the three people who were in the house that morning. The chef said he was in the kitchen getting school lunches packed. The cleaner said he finished cleaning quickly that day and left early. The butler had just gotten back after taking the kids to camp three hours away. Who's lying?
It's the chef. It's Saturday, so there's no school. And the kids have gone camping. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a scientist is working on something bizarre. He invites Kevin and Claire as blind test subjects for his new serum invention. He gives them each a glass of ice-cold lemonade. Kevin drinks his fast, but Claire apprehensively waits to see the side effects on him first. After two hours, nothing happens, so she drinks her glass. Two minutes later, her skin turns green. If both the drinks had the serum, why was only Claire affected? The serum was in the ice. Since Kevin drank his fast, none of it got in the lemonade. Claire runs out of the lab in horror. She gets in her car and speeds off. As she's driving down a long, empty road, one of her tires pops off. Good thing she has a spare in the trunk. But here's the problem. She now has no lug nuts to put the spare on with. So what should Claire do? Unscrew one lug nut from each of the other three wheels and use them to attach the spare tire. It'll be enough to get to the nearest garage safely. As Claire is putting on her spare tire, the scientist catches up to her. He hands her four pills and tells her it's a complex cure to the green face serum. Two of the pills are an antidote, and the other two are a catalyst that activates it. Claire must take one of each type together. If she takes two of the same, her face will stay green forever. Just as the scientist is handing her the pills, he trips and they get all mixed up. They look identical. What should Claire do? Grind the tablets up, mix all the powder together, and divide it in two parts. Each half will have the same amount of catalyst and antidote. It worked! And just in time, whew! The next day, Claire has a big calculus exam. But funny enough, all the students in the class refuse to take it. Professor Miller can expel only one student for skipping the test. All of them know each other's names. If a student knows they'll be expelled, they agree to take the test. How can the professor make all the students take it? She should tell them she'll expel the student whose name comes first alphabetically. Then this person won't skip the test. The next person on the list won't skip either. And so on until the end of the list. The next day, class isn't any easier. Professor Miller grabs her cup of coffee, takes a sip, goes to set it down, and what's this? It's stuck to her hand. Somebody put glue on the cup and she's got three suspects. Look carefully to find out which student is playing tricks on the professor. Sure, the first student has an awfully guilt-ridden look on his face. And the second student's smile looks just like pride for a job well done. But look closer at the third student's pocket. Yep, it's the tip of a glue bottle. Professor Miller is so annoyed by her class's shenanigans, she decides to change her career. Wow. She opens a shoe factory. She's so successful that she builds a second one in another city. But despite her success, the problems don't end. Her employees keep secretly taking shoes from the plant. What can she do to resolve the issue? Have one of her factories start making only left shoes, and the other only right ones. One of those shoe swipers is driving a semi-truck full of shoes to sell for a profit. He comes to a tunnel, and there's a major problem. His truck is just an inch too tall. But he can still drive through the tunnel. How? Let some of the air out of the tires. 
it'll lower the truck just enough. When the shoe swiper gets through the tunnel, he comes to a fork in the road. One goes to the town, the other to never-ending wilderness. There are guides standing at each. The catch? One always tells the truth, the other always lies. The driver doesn't know who's who, and he's only allowed one question. What should he ask to find out which road goes to town? Ask either one of the guides which road the other would say is the right way. Then he must choose the opposite. The truth-teller knows the other will lie, so they'll point the driver toward the road to nowhere. If he asks the liar, they'll know the other guard would honestly point him toward the town, so they'll, again, recommend the road to nowhere. The shoe thief takes the road to town, but he has another puzzle to answer before he's allowed to enter. The guard at the gate asks him one simple question. What's the logic in the order of the following words? Fun, blue, be, more, and dive. Every word rhymes with its number on the list. Fun, one, blue, two, B three, and so on. The shoe swiper finally settles down in this new town. Too bad for him, he can only use a payphone to make calls. One day, the phone breaks. He informs the phone company, but they do nothing. He tries again the next day. Same result. The third time, he finally gets them to come out and fix the phone. So what did he say? He claimed that people were making calls without paying. Rebecca works in a large international company. One day, she comes back to the office from lunch and finds her colleagues extremely agitated. Oh, They hurry to tell the girl that someone knocked their HR manager out just an hour ago. The police have three suspects. Laura is an applicant. She says she was a bit angry with the HR manager. After all, he made her wait for ages, well past the time of her appointment. She stayed outside in the rain and probably caught a cold. And still, Laura says, I would never hit him. Plus, I'm too weak to do it. Gary, who works in the marketing department, claims he hasn't seen the HR manager since he arrived at work. He was having a meeting from the very morning till lunchtime. Jacob, from research and development, tells the police he rode his bike to a coffee shop to get his cappuccino. He's just come back. Who knocked the HR manager out? It was Jacob. Both his bike and his clothes are dry and clean. How is it possible if it's raining outside? Jack is participating in a challenge. He's got to the last stage, which takes place in a desert. If he succeeds now, he'll win $1 million. Jack needs to get a key out of one of the four pots. On top of the first pot, there's a bowl filled with a strong acid. The second pot is covered with a bowl full of venomous spiders. In the bowl placed on the third pot, Jack sees a raging fire. A viper is curled up in the bowl covering the fourth pot. Jack isn't allowed to drop the bowls or turn them over. Which pot should he choose? The guy should choose the third bowl. He can put the fire out with the sand and get the key. Jacob is the owner of a small IT company. Larry is his subordinate, exceptionally talented, and just as forgetful. More often than not, he seems to be lost in his head. Such things as going on a trip out of the blue without notifying anybody is typical for this genius. Normally, the boss turns a blind eye to Larry's quirks. But this time, an important business meeting is about to start. Jacob needs the data Larry has been working on. But the guy is nowhere to be found. He doesn't answer his phone, so no one can reach him. One hour before the meeting has to begin, Jacob can't wait any longer. He switches on Larry's computer, but it's password locked. 
The man tries some random combination of letters and numbers, but of course, it's wrong. Suddenly, a tiny window appears on the screen. In this window, Jacob sees what seems to be a riddle. Little, little, late, late. After puzzling over it for a while, the man types something in the window and sees the home screen. The computer is unlocked! What has Jacob written? The answer to this rebus is too little, too late. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. The folder with the needed data is also protected by a password. When Jacob clicks on it, that's what he sees. Write backward all the numbers. Hmm, sounds like a tough task. Luckily, Jacob knows how Larry's brain works. He doesn't need much information to write the correct answer and, finally, get the information. What is the password? And there you have it! That's the phrase, all the numbers written backward. Camilla was terrified of dogs. One day she was jogging in the park and noticed a large dog sitting near the bench. It looked unfriendly. Uh The leash attached to the dog's collar was three feet long. Camilla decided it would be safe to pass by if there was at least seven feet of space between her and the pooch. But even being on a leash, the dog still managed to bite her. How come? Sadly, the leash wasn't tied to anything. David's company develops new apps for smartphones. Right now, he's looking for a designer. He's got hundreds of applicants, but has chosen just three of them. Angela's resume says, I'm 23 years old. I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm a fast learner and have already designed similar applications. Helen wrote in her resume, I'm 26 and have four years of work experience. You should hire me because I've created lots of TikTok stories that have gone viral. And Eric's resume claims he's 28 years old with seven years of work experience. He's designed tons of apps. He's been working for Google since the company was launched. David can hire only one person. But it's okay because only one applicant hasn't lied in their resume. Who is it? Eric has just 7 years of work experience. But Google was officially launched in 1998. There are no stories on TikTok meaning Helen couldn't create them. David hired Angela. Even though she hasn't been working that long, she's honest and has a nice portfolio. Kevin, a security guard in an amusement park, finds a boy standing near a roller coaster. The kid says his name's Nick. He doesn't know where his dad is. Kevin takes Nick to his office and makes an announcement. Soon after that, two men show up at the door. The first exclaims, We were in a cafe, but after eating my burger, I felt so sick, I had to spend almost 20 minutes in the bathroom. When I got out, Nick wasn't around. I was so worried. The other man interrupts him. We rode a roller coaster together. Then I told Nick to wait there and went to get us some hot dogs. Which man is Nick's father? Nick is too small to ride the roller coaster, which means the second man is lying. The boy's dad is the unlucky guy with food poisoning. Aiden fell madly in love with a beautiful girl, Ella. He tried to spend all his time with her. The man bought her expensive presents and flowers, invited her to the best restaurants, organized yacht trips. They traveled the world, stayed in famous hotels, and went shopping for designer clothes. In less than a year, Aiden became a millionaire. How is it possible? Well, before meeting Ella, the guy was a billionaire. Carter had a fast and successfully developing company until his main investor went bankrupt. Carter was desperate. 
he went to visit his best friend Justin, a coffee shop owner. Cheer up, Justin exclaimed. One rich businessman visits my cafe almost every day. He's here today, too. He's very mysterious and doesn't have any social media accounts. Few people know about his wealth, but I do. Go and introduce yourself. Justin pointed toward the back of the coffee shop. Carter went there and saw three men. Uh Uh-oh. He hadn't asked his friend which one was the wealthy entrepreneur. He looked at the men attentively. In no time, he figured out who was the one he needed. It isn't the guy in the middle. He has a $1 store bag. The one on the right could be rich, but he's recording an Instagram story. And the businessman isn't active on any social media. This means the man Carter needs is on the left. Carter was right. The guy turned out to be a billionaire. He was impressed with Carter's business. But before signing the papers, he mentioned one condition. Carter had to prove he was prepared for all kinds of stressful situations. The man had nothing to do but agree to the challenge. After that, Carter was taken to a remote house and left alone. He was locked in a large room with no windows and three doors. Suddenly, the ceiling started to go down. At the same time, the room began to fill with water. Carter knew that behind the first door, there was a powerful whirlpool that would take him under the surface in no time. The second door was hiding a school of vicious piranhas. And behind the third one, there was a deep pit with sharp wooden spikes at the bottom. Which door should Carter choose to save his life? Carter picked the third door. Once the pit filled with water, he swam over the spikes and successfully escaped from the trap. When he returned to the office, the billionaire had already signed the contract. Three friends agreed to hang out together on Friday night. One of them, Brian, was tasked with bringing pizza. But the guy was running extremely late. His friends were starving. Strangely, Brian wasn't picking up their calls. But in an hour or so, he sent them a selfie. In the photo, he was standing next to his car. In the following message, he wrote he had run out of gas. He was at a gas station, tanking his car up. But his friends didn't believe Brian's excuses. Why? In the picture, it's clearly seen the guy's got an electric car. It doesn't need gas. Oliver was attacked in his flat and taken to the hospital. There are four suspects, all of them Oliver's neighbors. Wow, I'd find another apartment. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park since early morning. Henry explained he had been painting in his studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he had been repairing his car. Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Look at these people's hands and try to figure out who's lying. It's a bit strange that Jacob, who was repairing his car, and Henry, who was painting, both have such clean hands. But they could be wearing gloves. On the other hand, Sophia's hands and fingers don't have wrinkles. But it would be a natural skin reaction after three hours in a bathtub. Sophia, you've been caught red, I mean, smooth-handed. The police found out there was a new smuggler in town. Three people were under suspicion. Luna, a school bus driver, Jackson, a fire truck driver, and Daniel, an ambulance driver. All of them claim to have been busy with their work since the very morning. Can you figure out who's the smuggler? Look at the car Daniel drives. On such vehicles, the word ambulance is normally written backward. It's done so that other drivers can instantly read the inverted word in their rearview mirrors. Well, it seems Daniel has given himself away. It was the day when Jacob was supposed to be discharged from the hospital. He had spent a couple of months there and underwent several surgeries. 
His doctor told him he was going to be fine. It was safe for Jacob to leave the hospital. But the guy didn't believe these promises. In low spirits, he walked home. On the way, he accidentally bumps into an elderly lady. She gets furious and started to shout at Jacob. But instead of arguing back, he hugged the woman and ran home. Why? Jacob had hearing loss. He didn't believe his problem could be helped. But when he heard the woman shouting at him, he realized the doctor had told him the truth. Maybe the doctor should have shouted. (laughs) Chloe stayed late at the office that day. When she was driving home, the woman was worn out. At one moment, she even started to doze off. That's when it happened. She spun off the road and crashed through the fence that was on her way. She couldn't control the car anymore. It slipped down a steep hill and ended up in a lake. Chloe couldn't move her arms. They were stuck. She couldn't undo her seatbelt or open the door. The car sank to the bottom of the lake. Was Chloe doomed? Rescuers arrived three hours later. The woman was still in the car, but she was alive. How did she survive? After the car hit the bottom of the lake, the water only came up to Chloe's throat. It was a very shallow lake. Good thing, huh? It was Jack's birthday, and the fellow got a present he had been dreaming about for ages. A motorbike. The next morning, he rode his bike to college and left it at the parking lot. During lunchtime, Jack decided to check on his motorbike. Imagine his horror when he found out someone had broken the mirrors. The security guard told Jack, Only three other people had left his building in the afternoon. They were Owen and Sam, two best friends, and Layla, the girl who once liked Jack but got turned down by him. Owen said he and Sam had gone to the campus cafe to get sandwiches for lunch. Sam confirmed this. He then added the bike could have been damaged by Layla out of revenge. But Layla told Jack her mother had visited her and they had spent two hours together. So, who's lying? Owen has a paper bag with food delivery written on it. It means the guys ordered their lunch, not bought it in the cafe. They broke Jack's mirrors and tried to frame Layla. Not a good reflection on them, huh? Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital. Oh no, there are hundreds of rooms there. Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the hospital floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there, all covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It was the dude in the middle. He didn't even have a medical chart next to his bed. Very quick job on the bandages, though. The CEO of a large company called the police. He was sure that one of his employees, Victoria, had stolen a memory card with secret information. She was going to sell it to their competitors. The police arrived at Victoria's house, but the woman didn't let them in without a warrant. The officers had to leave to get all the necessary papers. By the time they were back, Victoria had already been sitting in her car, ready to drive off. The police officers arrested the woman. They searched her car and clothes, but found nothing. And then, when they were about to give up, one of the detectives realized where Victoria kept the memory card. Can you figure it out? When the police first came to her, the woman had her hair down. But after that, Victoria changed her hairstyle. The memory card is in her bun. Yep, Victoria and her sticky bun. (laughs) Michael was going home from the gym when everything went black. When he regained consciousness, he found out he was in a locked room. Next to the door, there was a computer with a keyboard. On the screen, there was a riddle. Michael had to write the correct answer and the door would open. 
The riddle went like this. It makes two people out of one. What is it? Michael typed the needed word, and the door opened. He was free to go. What was the answer? It's a mirror. Oh, I was guessing a buzzsaw, but this one is better, and not as messy. Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one? Both hairstylists are using regular scissors. But instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. A man on a bike grabbed Sarah's bag with all her documents, money, and smartphone and sped off. The only way the girl can get her bag back is by taking someone's car and driving after the criminal. There are three vehicles parked nearby. Which one can Sarah break into and drive off? Whoops, I mean borrow. A man is sitting in the blue car. That's no good. If she decides to take the red car, CCTV will spot her. Her only option is the brown vehicle. Oh, and Sarah, don't forget to return the wheels when you get your bag back. Otherwise, you'll be Grand Theft Sarah. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. Wait, mushroom hunting? What do you do, sneak up on them so they don't escape? Anyway, they started to quarrel. Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. She was still fuming, but also worried. Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Um, did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? So, where's Alex? Kidnapped by the escaped mushrooms? We may never know. Ella came to a party that took place in her best friend's house. It was a riddle party. All the guests had to crack mysteries and participate in different challenges. Ella's task was to get out of a locked room in the basement. The girl was blindfolded, taken downstairs, and left alone. After pulling the piece of cloth off her eyes, Ella noticed the door had a code lock. She also spotted a sheet of paper lying on the floor next to the door. There were four flowers drawn there. Ella looked at them for a while and entered the correct code. The door opened and the girl joined the party. So what was the code? Ella counted the petals on each flower. The code was 5748. Carter was visiting his friend Matteo, who lived in another city. Matteo loved riddles. In the evening, he challenged Carter to get the key to the guest room where the guy was supposed to be sleeping. Matteo dropped the key in the bucket filled with cold water and told Carter to get it. But he couldn't touch the water or use anything to pull the key out. That night, Carter slept in the guest room. How did he get the key? He put the bucket over a fire. The water started to boil and soon evaporated. After that, Carter picked the key up. Matteo was steamed. Nora was an insurance agent. Once, her client called her early in the morning. The woman was in tears. At night, someone had broken into her house. By the time the woman had enough courage to go downstairs, the thief had already taken all the valuables. When she looked out of the window, the man was running away. 
Do you remember what he looked like? Nora asked. The client answered, It was still dark outside. I understood it was a man, tall and thin. He had dark hair and was wearing a v-neck t-shirt. Nora immediately realized her client had staged the burglary. How did she figure it out? It was dark, and the man was running away from the client's house. Then how could the woman see he was wearing a v-neck t-shirt? Beats me!